on today's try to finish something. <laughs> wow, I, I really need a haircut. I'm just seconds into this and I am already on a tangent. Today on today's try to finish something, I am going to try and make something that I haven't made before. You've seen a ton of people make some amazing Star Wars wall panels as seen inside Galaxy's Edge. I'm trying to make a big project that is going to be inspired by the Rise of the Resistance inside Galaxy's Edge. They have these ammo containers that have weapons inside of them, like weapons racks. And I'll, I'll show you a little bit of footage here. This is me cutting a propane cage tank in half. And I was wearing goggles most of the time, but I thought it didn't look cool. And for some reason, I thought the squinting as the sparks were going all over my face looked better than with the goggles on. Wear goggles if you're using a tool to cut a giant thing that is metal in half and spraying sparks in your face. Let's, let's try and save your eyes. I actually did wear goggles most of the time, but what this is going to be is a storage locker for weapons that I've been accumulating. Some blasters and grenades and a bunch of stuff that I want to put inside of this. And I want to decorate the outside of this once I finally get it cut in half and made to look Star Wars. I want some wall panels on it and I need a wall panel. And it's been raining and today I am going to make a Star Wars wall panel. And that's what I'm going to do on today's Try to Finish Something. So I am building my first wall panel for my Star Wars themed room and I'm going to answer some questions that I got online like how and why I make these videos. I'm going to use these two pieces that I made in my last video and have them be the centerpiece of my wall panel. As for why do I make these videos? I. I really have no idea. I'm going to make a box to house these two that is pretty shallow and will be embedded into a fake rock wall and mount using the mounting holes that I pre-created in these already. As I make this, I'm going to try and give some details on how I make my videos. I have this overhead camera that is also my main voice recording picking up whatever random tangents I wind up going off on. I actually have people that want more stories and more tangents. We call those people mentally deranged. But this overhead camera mic gets all of it. And what I also wind up doing is recording some voiceover after the video that weaves together all of my crazy. I don't think a lot of other people who put out videos do it in exactly this way, but they seem to also not ramble on as much. Here's a bunch of random crap that I cut out on the Glowforge, and I did make some Greebly holders that I'll show you, and yes, I did cheat and made the box pieces on the Glowforge, but it's a super simple box and could have been made probably faster with just wood and brad nails. I just need to figure out which circle Greebly is going where. Now, let's put this box together and go into some more of how I make these videos and, yes, ramble. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm just putting this together with super glue. And I've mentioned that I did do morning radio for 18 years and then I started my own in store music company that I did for eight years until I sold it and then worked for the company that I sold it to until they fired me. The first time I was ever fired in my entire life. I now work for another in-store music company that used to be one of my company's competitors and I run their audio department. Yes, if you follow that path, I am working for a company trying to take all of my old clients and bring them to a new, better company. And they can go back to working with me. Bonus! My new company did a whole employee spotlight on me and I was telling old radio has-been stories about my past and name-dropping some of the bands that I've met along the way, and it all felt so strange and self-serving. But at the same time, it was a fun walk down memory lane. When I started doing morning radio for an alternative radio station, I was one of the youngest mid-to-large market DJs hosting a morning show. And I did things because 
I thought that they made us look cool at the time. Like, we never took photos with the bands or got autographs because everyone was already asking to do that and I thought it made us look cooler. Now, looking back, I would love some of the photos with some of the now huge names that we had had in studio, but I was too cool. And as I get older, I try and be more observant about when I'm being a tool and fess up to dumb things. Speaking of which, one of the reasons I'm making this box is because I need to mount it into a wall, but the other is because I'm playing around with some design ideas because I am a failure. A long while ago, I traded a finished light fixture panel for some cool Star Wars money that a guy named Scott Hall had made. He sent the handmade metal Star Wars money and I was actually never really satisfied with the light cover design and I never sent him that light cover. See? Failure. I'm using this as an idea springboard to come up with some ideas to make him a better light cover and some other stuff as, I don't know, an apology for failing and leaving him hanging. He does some really cool money and I will leave a link in the video description in case you ever want to get your hands on some actual metal Star Wars money. Sorry, I'm just trying to decide if it's easier to put the glue on the sides of the box or the part that slides in. But I am going to need more than just these two greeblies. It will have a lid to add some dimensionality and interest to the wall panel, but I need to get it filled with all kinds of fun stuff. So recently I talked about the neighbor that I have that set my entire property on fire. He burned my solar, the barn, the boat, just a ton of stuff. But me, trying to find the bright side, pulled these out of the charred remains of my solar panel fuse boxes. They've got a cool, almost Mando bullet-like look to them, and I'm going to try and design a holder that these can just snap into and become interior greeblies to this box. I'm just using some mineral spirits and a popsicle stick to get the stickers off of these. After shooting them outside with some flat black spray paint, I'm just using some steel wool to pull some of the paint back off of these and give me a weathered look. I like it. So here is what I made on the Glowforge, and let's see if this works. The bottom plate and two contact points with half circles that I'm hoping I can snap the fuse into. Alright, concept worked. Now a version with a little more interest. That worked too. And here's the same piece with paint. And I think I like it, but I think I want to make one that has space for two side-by-side -side fuses and has a plate on the bottom so that I can add some color that you can see through the vents. It's a tight fit, but I can get two in there. And I think I want to add a bit of PVC pipe in there too, but this is too big. And how am I going to attach that corner piece to the inside of the box? Yep, I'm going to make a new greebly that I can laser cut out and a few other things out of some scrap. I'm just trying to figure out how it's all getting arranged and what greeblies I'm going to use from my collection. By the way, all of the patterns and stuff that I make are available for free on my Facebook page, Try to Finish Something, if you ever want to make any of it, all for free. So the other thing I do while filming is I have multiple cameras going in case I need more footage. This, of course, is from the overhead camera and this camera out here. You can see my overhead camera in these shots. And this is what I also record my audio on. All of my audio comes from here except sometimes I will do some pickup filling stuff in between the shots so that I can do segues during the editing. I also have another camera over there that is just there filming in case I need some extra footage and one of these cameras doesn't catch it. I very rarely use that camera. I'm not sure if I've ever used that camera. <laughs> anyway, I'm on a tangent. I'm trying to finish this panel up and here's what I got. I decided to shoot the inside with paint and start attaching stuff to add some interest and depth to the interior. I'm also weathering some of the pieces like the fuse holder. Sorry, that PVC pipe, I made that smaller and I've already painted it. I mounted that to the inside and added some bits from an electronics board to the side of it and made some panels and shapes to fill out the 
flat look of the interior. I had to alter this just a little bit to get it to fit with the stuff that I had already attached. And I want to add a lot of wires and tubing to the inside of this as well. I painted that gray and it has mounting holes for another old Greebly that I have. This wire harness from the telephone operator cord board that I harvested for Greebly's, I don't know, almost two years ago. And now weathering all of this again. I'm just using brown and black water-based oil paints and three or four other colors of watered-down Walmart brand acrylic paints to add some grime on there. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> you know what else that other camera also catches? You want to see what an old white guy with no rhythm looks like when a good hip-hop song comes on a Spotify playlist? Oh, yeah. This is embarrassing. <laughs> So I am just clipping wires and finding places to attach them so that they look like they have a purpose. And I, I might need to stop filming on that camera. Now the lid. I have a Facebook friend group that includes Jamie Dull and he lives near what I can only call nerd heaven, some place called Surplus Gizmos. And when he goes, he offers to pick up and ship things if we see things that we like during our nerd FaceTime calls, and he found this multi-pronged plug, and I wanted to feature it on the lid. I'm just attaching that and adding some rust and weathering to the black parts of this lid. I'm also adding some ribbed tubing to the interior of the wall panel to add more to fill up the inside. Oh yeah, so I spent a week installing sprinklers in my wife's horse pastures, and it was backbreaking, digging, and then filling trenches and putting in sprinklers. The upside? Greeblies. The sprinklers had these different heads depending on your water pressure and what you needed. The extras? Why, those became Greeblies. After I mount these hoses into my pressure fit connections that I'll glue on the inside of the box, I will get to installing those into this little plate here, just like this. But Sean, shouldn't this have a splash of color? Are you just making this wall panel all black? Nope. The top plates are going to be orange. Now to weather that plate. And weather some of the tubing below. and attach the other orange plates with the mounting screws and weather those. Just adding a little bit of chipping on the paint. Scratches. And some general grime. The last thing I want to do is add stickers, and these are from Van Oaks Props. I will link those as well. And I love Derek's stickers, but the newer batches are even more glorious because they are die cut and you don't have to cut them out. Just find the sticker that you want, peel it up, and place it. The other batches you had to cut out, and sometimes that is just too hard. I'm just adding some attention here and there with the stickers, and then I will weather those two and do a final pass of exterior weathering. Now to go and design Scott a wall panel that I won't be too embarrassed to send, but I'm calling this Star Wars wall panel finished. I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please like, subscribe, join my Patreon, consider telling someone else about this little slice of nerd heaven, or even grab something off of my Amazon wish list pinned in the comments down below. And if you didn't like it, as always, just keep it to yourself, and we'll see you next time as we try to finish something. Don't forget to join my Facebook group, and all files and templates I make are yours free. And don't forget to stick around, more glam shots are coming up next.